Okay, I see a uh, shoulder elevation right away here. Which one? Hmm. A little bit of rounding. Mm, I would say a whole lot of rounding. Go to the back picture. Because he still has this the person still has a bit of a neck. So that's always a good sign. There's that shoulder elevation. Yeah. And then look at the elbows. Look mm. at those elbows. Draw your line across the elbows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I point that out because that tells us a tremendous amount about the shoulders. So if you mimic that in your body where you have to actually take your right arm a little bit away from your body and then bend it a little bit more, you have then a, probably a little pain in your right back. And that's that's a driving symptom in this person's posture, the way those elbows are hanging and telling us about their shoulders. Well, he did report. He He's reporting lower back pain on the right side. Good Lord. All you have to do, try it, Kevin. Put your arm like that. Sit in your chair. Sit up pretty well. Yeah. Right? Pull your elbow back like on your right arm, like, and then just leave it there for yeah. like five seconds and realize it's almost like you're ready to do like a bow and arrow. You're right. But again, it's an incomplete. I, I bet the gait on this fellow has got some interesting arm swing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see a walking video. We got some averted oh, feet. Actually. And you can see again on the left, collapsed arch and internally rotation of the left leg strongly. And when you can't see the internal in the foot, go to the ankle. I could be not describing it correctly. I so wish she didn't have socks is, on, but it's okay. You can see it from the back. This is where you see it. Draw your ankle, draw your uh, line, if you would, from the middle of the ankle. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then go straight up. Mm -hmm. Oop, yep. And that's where I say, when I say the whole arch is collapsing, you see how the leg is falling in on that yeah. line? Yeah. So that's also really irritating the right side of the back. So guys out there, everything is cross pattern. Left leg, not so connected, as you can see. Or if you were a pusher, like a he was on a scooter and like, you know, he does pushing, but the wrong muscle group. Now, that's why I say it's sort of collapsed. You can see it going through the knee. It's really evoking part of the rotation. Do the same drawing on the right leg. Mm -hmm. Centered. Yeah, much, much more in. normal. Yeah, and your, your dot, ironically, should go a little bit more in towards the medial line. But, yep, yeah, and it's going to be even more centered. So the right side is externally rotated, like that leg is screwed into his body, hence he's super tight on that side. And this side is like the kickstand right. that catches. And I'm just going to tell you, we're going to see this posture over and over and over and over and over again, because most people have a very weak inner thigh on the left side, most, just most, you know, but it's a proper right-handed rotation we see a lot especially in american culture because we drive cars right uh, if we want to switch it up and drive on the other side maybe we'll have a saving chance you know but the car if this if you drive a lot y'all know you sit left drive right so this is really informative all sorts of ankle mobility um ankle sequence is like critical for this client because actually everything should... above is not so bad it's just no. suffering and he's he's a young man too. His early. I was 20s. just going to say this is a young person. Yeah, so, so he's, once, he's pretty straight. He's not totally damaged yet. <laughs> <laughs> he's rotated like uh, a whirly world. So the head is showing us right. Look, there's that side. Let's go to the other side and see. Because remember, we already said the left side. If you're uh, is cattywampus, the right side Ooh. I have higher hopes for. Ooh. All right, so but it's stacked all together forward of the line. Right. So everything went forward of the line together. So that means if we can get that right side back behind the line, then the left side could engage. Yeah. Like it's so simple where sometimes on our clients, we see, oh, the ribs are over here and the hip is over here. And what's that foot doing? This young person has just wound up and needs to be released. Give him some inner thigh work, standing at the wall with the inner thigh block, just leave him there. Yeah. Windmills, you know, gravity yeah. drop. 
Bye. <laughs> he's got a he's got a tight back. Um, yes. And he look does. at his neck. His neck is forward a little. Yep. And... Oh, it's forward a lot, but it's not hijacked his rib cage yet. That's why we saw such a strange positioning with the elbows. His core core brachialis is really tight. His pec minor is probably really tight. His tricep on his right arm is probably a little dysfunctional because he's kind of holds it like when someone's broken a, a, a limb, they kind of hold it. I don't know what he does all day, um, but I just know that the whole arm over the hip, right patterning, left patterning is not working. And then the head, if this posture continues, this young person will will not fare well. Because yeah. <laughs> that head, you guys got to remember, the head weighs. And you can see the angle of the ear. We already know he's got his chin out. I don't see the face, but I know that the chin is out because look at the angle of the ear. Yeah. And I would wonder if they, they got a, a flexion and then an extension. Yeah. To, for exactly. balance. The, the body is, is naturally going for balance. It is. You can see here too. You see how much chin we see? Yeah. You know, in Italian culture that, you know, we kind of would do like, hey, what's up? <laughs> you know, got a chin out. Hey, little Frank Sinatra. But it's like, you know, it's not helping him at all because that weight is is just driving some irresponsibilities in his low back because it's trying to take care of him. So I so love I how you Chris, saw that. You know. The shoulder is a problem, but not the problem. The shoulder is the symptom, but the dysfunction is somewhere else. This will become the problem if it carries on. But yeah. I bet you the first thing we would see after this person doing a menu or a protocol would be, um, that would look much better. We okay. got a bigger arm window on the right. Mm -hmm. Again, it's back to that elbow, right? That humerus, that elbow, the humerus tells us he's internally rotated and locked. He has great medial, poor external in the humerus joint. Mm. And yeah, it's going to hurt because that means every time he wants his arm to reach behind him, instead of using the proper shoulder, he does it from his low back. And this is what we want. We want this right yes, here. Sir. That's what we want. Knees over ankles, hips over knees, shoulders over hips. And, and if you ears. see it, it's second toe. Right. Some people are like, well, where do we draw the line? The, the second, second toe. toe. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. And some people say why the big toe counts as two. Ah. Therefore, the second toe truly is the keel line of the foot. So when I looked at this fellow's left foot, I can see his keel line is highly disturbed. Right. And yep. so he's got. He's got something going on in the back here. So mm -hmm. yeah, pull off some muscles. Let's get down deep. Get to the deepest. There's a huge part of his issue. Yeah. Yeah. So we're that that that's your deepest layer. You've got the psoas in the front. You've got roteris. You've got all the erectors. Let's see, you've got multifidus. You've got posture muscles. Now you're laying on the paraspineals. And they're like the secondary layer. Now you've got your third layer. By now, we can see he is so strong on those lines, especially the right. <coughs> Excuse me. When you have an anterior tilt. And when you've got posterior tilt, all that gets saggy. So all those muscles you just showed us. Yeah. The back muscles. And then, of course, you've got the front. And then the neck, that, the neck that we talked about. Huge, right? Yeah. And, and of course, I, I have it as well. I have the same thing, the flexion and then the extension. And uh, yeah, it can get tense. It can get tense right in here. <laughs> yes, it can. And so what happens too in the neck, you get a little bit of, you get actually excessive extension and excessive flexion, but people stop remembering how to move their head up on the atlas. And then we're those, you guys are all the ones that are going to call in about the weird headaches that nobody knows what's going on or the TMJ that comes and goes. Yep. Because once that head's out of position and then the neck muscles are trying to balance the head, that's not their job. The neck muscles are there to rotate, 
side flexion, extension, flexion, atlas and the um, axis, the occipital way up in your brain behind your nose. That's where we balance the head. Atlas so again, head. back to that whole thing. Yeah, those guys, the capitis, those are critical. And when we do this all day and stare at the computer, they get really turned off. Oh, right. Yeah. So that's why and when I get head. intense on the computer, it's like this it comes in and the head comes out. Yes. And then so imagine all that compression and then those muscles get really tight yep. and their posture muscles like they're supposed to be telling you, hey, there's a lion behind you, Dr. Reese. Yep. <laughs> you know, so they're part of, you know, people who talk about the vertigo and the headaches and the weirdness and the inner ear. And, you know, just remember, this is such a delicate system. And so also. Sometimes when people are like, I'm just lying down. It's not a very big postural protocol. It's life-changing if you look at those guys. Yeah. Our little dude. Yeah. <laughs> here it is right here. The head comes forward and then yep. it, the top of it comes back. Yeah. Cervical flexion and then extension. And then that's where the chin comes in. Uh-huh. Yeah. And you can, you know how it gets built in tremendously if you're willing to be a a bit of a postural person yeah go ahead and sit up and just get out of your chair just turn yourself sideways to our audience you can't do it right or wrong i just want you to stand up out of your chair are you, you asking me to do it right now i am what the, just i am sideways? yeah and just go ahead and stand up out of your chair let's watch dr reese get out of his chair because <laughs> this is going to be amazing yep Okay, and sit back down. Now, Dr. Reese, put your hand on your neck. Yep. Where we're talking about, put your other hand on your sacrum. All right, pretend you have that pole that we spoke of. Or if you've never seen it, guys, then we're going to have, imagine there's a pole down Dr. Reese's spine. Now, I want you to get out of the chair and don't break your pole. So you got to use your hips. Yes, sir. And now you got to sit down and use those hips. Voila! Sitting posture therapy, he's cured. Voila. But see, he doesn't like to do it that way. Most Americans, most people, when we get out of a chair, for whatever reason, we think that neck pulls us to sit up. And then all of a sudden, so imagine you do that how many times a day? Because we all get in and out of chairs. Yep. So guys, so much of what we're going to teach you on our programs too is how not to get yourself back in that place you went because your habits are a critical part of your posture. So I know people think I'm nuts, but right when I'm anywhere, Dr. Reese, like I will be sitting on a stool. I don't like the chairs. I don't ever hang out back here because boy, look at my neck. You know, I'm that person where people are always like, Rain, relax. I'm like, I am. I'm sitting on my sits bones. I'm in good posture. And then when I go to rise, I'm always aware of that. And then I walk away because gravity is always going to help me if I use gravity. But most of us, we got to right everyone knows those sounds and it's just partly because when we don't utilize our body we bring our body to the function right there's nothing wrong with your chair it's you <laughs> and right. i think it's going to be a fabulous thing to keep talking to people about because posture therapy isn't just therapy it's going to change your life just like this isn't a diet you're going to change your life right you're making changes for longevity yeah. I'm just excited. I'm excited to be a part of this. Imagine, I bet this person sits on their left butt cheek and swivels out of their chair crooked all the time. Yeah. Over and over and over. Well, it's and over. just so key for someone like him or any young person to get on postural therapy young because I, I could only imagine how much better I would be now at 43 years old well, if I know, started at 23 years old, you know? Yeah, your growth plates set at 28 mm. and i say that because a lot of people feel like they're indestructible and then they start heading towards their 30th birthday and they try to blame it on age but really at that point your growth plates are setting and now gravity and you are in a dance where before at least when you were growing you had up moments where you won you're like ah, i got taller and then at a certain age people are like why am i getting shorter <laughs> you know because you don't have that growth happening in the growth plates your bones have stopped growing but you can stay lengthened and widened and hydrated and the discs help 
you know, we have so many choices. Or you can slump in the chair, mm. smoke a cigarette, drink a coffee, hope that you get a <laughs> nice energy at round four. Yeah. And no, let's say no to that. Let's say no to that. All right. Well, the bottom line is that uh, we could we could help this kid. Yeah, we can help everyone. 